honored to talk to you today about friendships. And today we're talking about how to establish a holistic relationship. Because relationship, even though we have business relationship, then we have family relationship, then we have friend relationships, I do personally think establishing a holistic relationship is going to help you have a long-term healthy friendship where both people feel supported. And so the first pillar, and this is following our Get Loved Up pillars of spirituality, well-being, and entrepreneurship. So the, the first pillar in establishing a holistic relationship is, is spirituality. We all come from different cultures and backgrounds. And if you're like me, I have friends from all over the world. Uh, I don't just stick to like one specific group. I have friends in different parts of the country, different parts of the world, different nat nationalities, different cultures. So what do they believe in? Do they have a, spirit, a, a specific religion or spiritual practice? Or, you know, how do they, they connect in that way? And I know um, Brendan's community and my community, we're very spiritual based communities. And so do you know the culture of how this person connects? And the reason that this is important, because sometimes we can say things and we can do things and not knowing that it, it's hurtful to another one based on their beliefs. So Having compassion, and if you want to establish trust, just knowing what a person believes in can help you have some compassion around things that are said, especially with so many things going on around in the world. It's really important. People are breaking up and canceling people so fast, you know, it makes your head spin, you know, and even online. And, and the truth is, we just don't know what other people's preferences are. We just don't know how people were raised or how they grew up. And so if you really want to establish friendship, you have to ask questions. So what, what do they believe in? Right. And you never know when they're like, I don't know what I believe in. Can you support me? Can you help me? And you might've been helping them with business, or you might think they have it all together, but really inside they're they're seeking a deeper, a deeper spiritual connection. Um, so I think that is just such a profound place to start because I truly believe we're spiritual beings having a human experience and we can do all kinds of things with our life. But at the end of the day, that spiritual connection will, will solidify a friendship I feel for life. So really finding out what is, what is their spiritual affinity? What is their religion? What do they believe in? Um, if anything, and being able to have that conversation, I think is the grounds for a really strong friendship. Um, and number two is how is their wellness? A lot of times when we're hurting, like you might you might see someone grab their stomach every now and then or every now and then grab their heart or they might be complaining like, oh, I'm just having headaches. Right. And they you notice that they've been having migraines regularly. So noticing the signs when your friend is not OK and they might say, oh, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I just need to drink some water or it's fine. But I was just talking um, to my new friend, Marie Forleo, who I've been to be school and we're working with a lot. And she shared on the Get Loved Up podcast how, you know, it was her friend that asked her because she kept holding her stomach. And it was her friend that kept asking her, are you okay? And then finally recommending that she go to the doctor that she found out a health condition that she had and how it was so integral for her to go and get checked up at that time. So you never know if you see a friend that is hurting, headaches, clutching their stomach, clutching their heart, encourage them to go see a healthcare um, professional, especially at this time, because with all of the stress going on at this world, there are a lot of like, it's not just a regular diseases people are, are, you know, coming, running into right now. A lot of things are happening because of stress. And this is called unexplained illnesses. Like the doctors don't even have names of it, but different types of stress. You all know, I love the book, The Body Keeps Score. So if you haven't read that, I highly suggest reading it. But that stress can trigger things in your kidneys, things in your lungs, the, all over the body, depending on what it could be family stress, it could be work stress, it could be financial stress. But stress and anxiety and mental health illnesses are at an all time high right now. So if you find a friend or a loved one is constantly dehydrated, constantly irritated, constantly even angry, like, all of these are valid signs that they are not well. So please, please, please 
don't overlook it and suggest they go see um, a healthcare pr uh, professional or even a therapist. And I know that can get kind of touchy. So definitely test the waters. And, and I think one of the um, questions that I like to ask before I suggest anything is how can I support you best right now? This is the best question to ask when someone's been through trauma, when something's happened in their life, how can I best support you right now? Because you might think, oh, they want to do this, they want to do that, but just ask me, how can I best support you? Because they might say, I just need some space right now. And you're coming over with movies and television and it might cause just more of a headache or just not feeling like they can have some time to themselves. Um, and then if you find that, hey, they've been having this time to themselves for a whole week and a half and you go check on them and their house is in array and they're not doing OK. That's when you want to you know, recommend that they see someone or um, just be there for them in person. And I feel like when you ask, how can I support you? Either they're going to say they need you know, you to be with them or they need some space um, and know that, you know, either one of those things can change at any time. Nothing is absolute, especially when it comes to uh, wellness, because if, if someone especially is experiencing mental health crisis because of the stress of the last year or stress of transition, then their emotions can go all over the place. And as a highly sensitive, intuitive HSI, I know about your emotions. One minute you're at a 10, the next minute you're at a two, and then you're back up to a 10 again. So I can definitely relate to having a breath of emotion. And someone said, just stress. Yes, that is that is exactly what I say sometimes. When deeper things are happening, I'm like, oh, I'm just stressed. Or I'm just a little frustrated. But then I talk to my therapist and they're like, okay, tell me about this thing. And they start digging. And next thing you know, yes, it was more than just stress. It's, I feel unseen. I feel unheard. I feel like, you know, like Jamie was saying, like, maybe I don't feel seen and, and I'm trying so hard. I, I was in a relationship and the person made me feel like this big. And, and now I, I don't, I'm, I'm afraid of another relationship. So sometimes we don't know if you're not a professional therapist, you don't know as a friend, you don't know. And also for yourself, you don't know. So I think it's really important important to, to ask for help and to allow help, especially at this time, especially if you feel like you're fine. Everyone, I recommend, you know, at this time, everyone have a therapist or a counselor or um, a holistic health practitioner that you're talking to on a regular basis, because as a country, we've been through, we've been through trauma. Hello, everyone. I love to start off all my sessions with grounding because grounding in the breath, it grounds us not only individually, but also collectively. And that's how we'll start our oneness in this session. So if you will join with me, place your right hand over your heart and your left hand over your right. Take a deep inhale through your nose and exhale side out through your mouth. Inhale and hold the breath. And I want you to think of one word that embodies how you feel today. One word that embodies how you feel. And exhale, sigh it out. And the reason this isn't so important, and you can use that in the beginning of your meetings, uh, whenever things are getting heated, just that inhale and exhale to bring yourself back to center, back to your purpose, back to your core, it can be that easy. Um, I talk a lot about, about our nervous system, how we have the parasympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system to calm us down and the sympathetic to rev us up. And so when you do that mindful breath, it triggers your parasympathetic so you can rest and digest. So no, it doesn't matter if you had an argument before or you were as excited before, maybe just excited about your next place in life, but it brings you back so you can align with your purpose, so you can align with what you're really here to do. Because it's important um, to ask ourselves how we're feeling at every part of the day. I have this practice that I, that I use, and I want to share with you what I ask myself every day at noon. And I have it in my phone. It's on alert. I ask myself two questions every single day at noon. And those questions are, how do you feel and what do you need? Again, how do you feel 
and what do you need? Because if you are anything like me and you're empathetic, you love helping people, you love giving, a lot of times you can get overwhelmed or you can overextend yourself and you, you're done through half your day, you didn't eat, you didn't drink, um, you, you know, and you're just going on fumes. But if you have this alert in your phone that asks yourself, how do I feel and what did it? So some days it might be, how do I feel? I'm hungry, I need to eat. How do I feel? I'm frustrated, I need to take a break. How do I feel? So I want you all to think about that right now. And what you told me, how you feel, what do you need? Especially if you felt these different things, what do you need to shift that energy back to love? And I'll tell you my concept on love and fear right now as we kind of dive into uh, oneness, because when it comes to oneness and that's connection with others, it starts with a connection to yourself. And I know you've heard it from every coach because it's the most important connection, connection to yourself and asking yourself how you feel. Because if you don't feel okay, then it's hard. It's going to be hard for you to pour into someone else from a healthy place or to help someone else without being exhausted. So it starts with you saying, okay, how do I feel? And then answering what do I need? Okay. And now once you focus on yourself and you have your needs met, you are fed, you are well, you are clear on your purpose, then and only then can you pour into others. So we have this mantra in my community and my get loved up community, and it's called love yourself, love others and love the world in that order. A lot of times we try to do great work in the world and that's amazing and we try to serve, but we haven't taken care of our, our basic needs. So we get drained, exhausted, and then eventually resentful, right? And so if we focus on pouring into ourselves first and most, and I love this quote from Lisa Nichols, Fill your cup so you can give from the overflow. Allow others to sip from your saucer. And so when you focus on filling your cup with, you know, mentally, spiritually, physically, with all these affirmations that we've gotten um, from all the different coaches, when you fill your cup with giving yourself enough self-care time, when you fill your cup with exercising and moving as much as you need, then you're giving from an abundant place. It's from abundant place, not from a, a space of scarcity. So I invite you when it comes to oneness to ask yourself first, are you taking care of yourself? And then when it comes to others, it's really about acknowledging. And that's something that hopefully everyone learned in the last year. We don't all think alike. We don't all move alike. We all are uniquely different. So being able to acknowledge someone else's experience, even if it's different from ours, is the key to oneness. And I want you to write that down. Acknowledging someone's experience, even if it's different than ours, is the key to oneness. Because we're not like, and, and honestly, if we were all like, it wouldn't even be fun. Our differences are what make us unique. Our differences are what makes the world beautiful. So the more that we really acknowledge someone's experience and then ask yourself, well, is that something that I can learn from? Is that something that I wanna incorporate into my life? Or is this something that's not in alignment with me right now? Because sometimes things don't align at the moment, but then a year later, you're like, no, you know what? Jenna told me that like a month ago and I actually get it now, right? How many times have we said that? How many times have we went somewhere and it didn't align with us at the moment, but then after a couple, a couple months or a couple of weeks, you're like, you know what? That totally makes sense now. And so when we acknowledge, we're just taking in information without trying to own it. We don't have to say it's ours. We don't have to say that's who we are, but we just receiving this information. We are going to talk about how it really takes self-reflection to build healthy leadership. So improve leadership through self-reflection. I'm going to take you through something today that some of you all may have heard of before and some of you haven't heard of before, and it's called our energy centers. Some call them spiritual energy centers. Some call them chakras or chakras, however you pronounce it, however you want to think about it it's there, right? We have this gut feeling in our stomach when something isn't right. We get that lump in our throat when we want to say something, but we just can't say it. 
So I, through my studies, I've come to understand that it's our body speaking to us. And not only have I learned how to listen to this beautiful way our body communicates with us at all times, I've been able to teach others how to tap in and really self-reflect on what the body is telling us at all times and how to take that through to improve yourself and improve yourself, of course, so you can be a better leader. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and dive in and get started with what are these spiritual energy centers or what are these energy centers all about? And I'm going to start from the bottom up. So the first energy center is the root chakra. And so the root is located at the end of your spine and the color that's associated is red. So in my book, I talk about the chakras. You have a little chart. I have it where you can actually see the different parts and the colors. And with each one, you're going to find that there's different ways that you can improve each area. So your root is all about safety and security right? So the reason this is the root is because if you don't feel safe and secure, let's say if you don't have a home to go to, if you don't have the finances you need, if you are not, don't feel safe and secure, it's going to affect every other thing in your life. And your root is all about safe and security. Your sacral is about expression. Your solar plexus is about standing in your power. Your heart is about giving and receiving love. Your throat is about speaking your truth. Your third eye or center of your forehead is about intuition. And your crown is about divine alignment. So it goes all the way up. And so I'm going to speak in detail about this, each one. I want you to take notes, but also in my book, you can actually take the quiz and see if you're overproductive in that chakra, if you're underproductive, or if you're balanced, right? And again, this is no judgment. This is a no judgment zone. It's just seeing where you are. And then I also give tips, and I'll give you some today, on what you can do to improve each area if you're not feeling like your balance in, in each area. So I'm really excited. This is like the most requested thing that I've done out of my book. And people love getting to know themselves and their body in a new way. And I think we should teach this in grade school to our children to really get to know their body. Um, but you're learning it today. So I'm excited. So let's go back to the root. So the root, your sense of safety and security. And so I'm just going to give you a little bit um, from the book. When you take the quiz, some of the questions are, do I exercise regularly? Is my diet healthy and balanced most of the time? So while I'm going through this, you could just check on your page, yes or no. Um, do I take time to be in nature on a regular basis? Do I feel good about my body? Because sometimes that negative self-talk, that's your safety and security. Am I well organized? Sometimes we got all these ideas going, but our house is a wreck. Why is it that all of a sudden, when we organize our house, we think better, we think good. That all has to do with your root chakra, your safety, your security. Um, am I focused on what I need to do? So sometimes our brain could be so scattered, we have no focus. That um, That is in alignment with the root chakra. I'm comfortable with my level of prosperity and abundance. So no matter how much you make, some people can make millions and some can make a couple of thousand and be happy. It really is not about how much, it's if you're comfortable with where you are. Do you feel secure with the amount of money that you're making? Do you usually trust your instincts? Do you usually trust yourself? Or are you always asking, what do you think? What do you think? Are you always looking outside of yourself for the answer? Or do you, do you trust your in intuition? Um, are you good at taking care of details? A lot of times when we don't feel secure, we don't feel comfortable taking care of details um, because we don't feel safe. Um, do you regularly declutter? I mean, if you're like me, look, I throw things all over my house, but eventually I clean it up, right? So it's not about like not ever being messy, but do you understand the balance of having a clean and sacred home and how that helps your, your productivity and at the end, your leadership? So all of these have to do with root chakra. So look down, how many times did you say yes? How many times did you say no? If it was no, if you got a lot of no's, that could mean that your root is underproductive and that a couple of these tips, which I'm going to share with you, can help get your root more productive. Now, if you had a lot of yeses, 
that's good. That could be your balance or, and that's why there's no judgments that you're seeing where you are. If you're always exercising, super organized, you know, eating so healthy that, you know, you can't ever have a French fry. I mean, and I'm not promoting French fries here, but you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we can get so strict and that could be fear too. You could be so afraid if I don't do things perfectly, then everything is going to go to crud. And we all know that that's not true. It takes a healthy balance. So even if you had all yeses, um, then you want to look and make sure that you're not overproductive and not it's not to a point where it's making you uncomfortable or giving you a high level of anxiety or making your friends or family um, very um, uncomfortable. And if it is, again, no judgment, but just say like, okay, how can I allow myself a little more flexibility? So again, overproductive, underproductive, or balance. So kind of see where you are there. And now some tips to balance, uh, balance your root chakra, create a clean and organized home environment. Now I'm going to tell y'all this part of my house is clean. This part of my house is kind of messy, right? And I show people mostly this part. Again, it's all about balance. It's not about perfection. It's about progress. Where can you declutter? I have a desk in my home and I'm like, I am going to spend this month decluttering this desk a little bit at a time, right? So I'm not trying to do it all in one day. And if you need help, you need to get someone to help you, you can always do that. Number two, a tip could be spend time in a healthy environment. So whether that's going outside, whether that's maybe taking a short trip or a staycation, even a little house swap, that's a tip that got really popular within my community during uh, the quarantine. You know, you're in the house all the time. So within pods, they would house swap. So just going to someone else's house that maybe lives down the street, or maybe it's a house of someone in another state, or maybe even in another country, depending on what you're able to do. But can you change your environment? Or can you get outside of nature? But those things um, really help your root because it really challenges you. Do you feel safe in other environments that are not your own? And then movement exercise. We all know when we move our body, we get our heart rate up, we're going to be healthier. So do you have a regular movement practice that you like? I love yoga. I love running. You might like mountain climbing. You might like swimming or biking. So it doesn't, it's not a one way fits all. It's whatever way that you're going to do. People ask me, what's the best way, Koya? I say the best way is the way that you do, <laughs> you know? And I know Brendan says that all the time. Like the best is the one that you actually do. So find out, even if it's just five to 10 minutes a day, find out what form of movement. It could be Pilates. It could be yoga. It could be basketball. It could be whatever you want it to be, but something that will get your heart rate up um, and help the blood flow because that helps with purification. It helps with healing and it helps you feel strong and safe in your body. This can be your day for personal growth. This can be that day you committed to and you remember and you go, that was the day I got myself a community. I got better coaches. I committed to making my life the absolute best that I could. This is that day. Make today your growth day. Click the button on this page and sign up right now.